It's May and this is the race news. So round three of the Profix Swiss Bike Cup took place. The Bike Days event in Solitaire over the weekend. Beautiful weather greeted the racers and a picturesque woodland trail awaited them. Firm packed soil rooted sense of fast racing was assured. In the men's elite, you'd be forgiven for having the same assurance on the winner as world champion Nino Schurter was on the start line. Nino hasn't gotten used to losing during the last year or so and his win at round two of the Swiss Bike Cup in Sharm gave no hint of a drop in form. However, Schurter was beaten in round one of the World Cup by Sam Gaze in that tense battle. And if you remember, he didn't get things all his own way at the Cape Epic after teammate Matthias Sturman was forced to retire. So are cracks starting to appear? Maybe it's too early to say. A truly world-class field of elites were ready to put the Olympic champion to the test and Swiss talent in the form of Matthias Fluckiger, Rito Indergland and Lars Foster ready to grab important points in a championship where they have high hopes of a title. The lineup also included World Cup heavy hitters such as Silverback's Martin Gluth, Cannondale's Manuel Fumic, Trek Factory Racing's Kiwi racer Anton Cooper, plus a welcome return to racing for Schurter's teammate Matthias Sternemann, of Scott Sram Racing of course. Sternemann will finish the day in a solid 10th place and after the draining events of the Cape Epic and the illness that ensued, he must be pleased to be healthy and back aboard his bike. Surprisingly, Anton Cooper was behind Sternemann in 11th, but that was due to a first lap puncture and a frantic battle from there to get back in the picture. Anton will have to wait until the abstract World Cup now to see if he's in good form and is in touch with Schurter. Speaking of Nino, the rest of the field will have to once again admire the champ's ability to seemingly win with ease. This week, it wasn't by a huge margin, just 20 seconds, but that gap over second place, Matthias Fluckinger, suggested a controlled day rather than his full force. Rito Indergand rounded out the top three, taking revenge on BMC teammate Lars Foster for that round two hammering. These two guys are in a tussle for the Profix Swiss Bike Cup now. Current world champion Landa Neff has not been having it all her own way in the Swiss Bike Cup this year. Bad luck and the rising form and confidence of Alessandra Keller have denied her success so far this year. So who could blame the champ for making other plans this week? Keller was there though and has surely got this title firmly at the top of her 2018 goal list. She continued that aim with a strong second place this week, beating Ramona Forcini in a blast for the line. First place though went to Elizabeth Brandau, who fresh from her win in the International Bundesliga last week is onto a winning streak, so expect a big day in Albstadt in a couple of weeks time. Now on to the Three Nations Cup at the MTB weekend in Newpen. The Three Nations Cup is really hotting up into an exciting championship to follow with the plenty of names littering the top results sheet. This week, Dutch national champion Anne Tauber was proving a beating of Jana Bellamoyne in Heming was no fluke by riding to a very convincing win. Anne on board her CST American Eagle was able to enjoy the sunny conditions and ride at a pace well beyond that of her rivals here in Newpen. The 23-year-old rode a really strong race and by the end she was over six minutes clear of Fabian Schaus of Luxembourg. Schaus herself had also stayed in control of her position and enjoyed a three-minute cushion ahead of third place, which was Tauber's fellow Dutch teammate Lottie Koopmans. In the men's race, we saw another Dutch win in the form of Milan Vader riding for the Habitat Pro MTB. The 22-year-old was over a minute ahead of Ruben Scheer from Belgium, who was 20 seconds ahead of Mark Boomeester. The previous round of this championship had been a strong showing from Belgium's Pierre de Froidmont and Eric Groen. They would have to settle for fourth and seventh respectively. Round five of the Copa Catalana now, and the weather was behaving slightly better this week in Barcelona. It wasn't perfect conditions though, so riders had to deal with some rain and plenty of mud during the race. Francis Victor Koretsky took the win for KMC Ecoy SR Suntour. He was just seconds ahead of Daniel McConnell from Australia. McConnell was happy to get a result for the Prima Floor Mondraker team. MMR Factory Racing's David Valero Serrano came home in third, and that made him the top rider from Spain. As it happens, it was a great day for the McConnells and Prima Floor Mondraker because Rebecca took the win for them in the women's elite race. Claudia Galicia Garcia was 45 seconds back in second place. That result for the Megamo factory racer continues her good form and position in the Copa Catalana. If you remember, Galicia Garcia won the previous round in Val the Lord. Magdalena Duran Garcia brought her Massey home just 10 more seconds back. Perfect racing conditions blessed the Ride Bike Festival and that was great because it was a super successful weekend with a record high participation in cross-country XCO events for Norway. With around 580 unique riders, 1400 starts across all age groups, around 160 elites and juniors in total. The race win was handled in mature form by Tobias Johansson for Sorensen Racing. The 19-year-old youngster confidently handling the 22-year-old Dane Sebastian Finney 
aboard his CST Sand American Eagle. Petter Fagerhard couldn't quite keep pace with his front two, but was the best of the rest. A field littered with young riders who have incredible speed. To give it perspective, the oldest rider in the top five are 23. The top 10 included strong riders such as Matthias Wengelin and a supreme legend in the form of Italy's Marco Fontana. That's a big scout for the eight riders who managed to stay ahead of Bianchi's Mr. Stylish. Sophie von Baer's work from the Netherlands was delighted to take the top step here at the Ride Bike Festival. Her rivals would not be able to handle the Dutch star piling on the pressure to hold them at bay. The chasing pack was headed by Specialized Racing's Ida Janssen. The young Red Bull athlete from Sweden is an emerging star of cross country and certainly a rider to watch over the next couple of years. Kerry McPhee of Great Britain was having an amazingly strong event. She took third spot in this race and had also podiumed in the previous two stages of shorter track racing. A third, a first and this third place wrapped up an amazing weekend for her. Congratulations Kerry. The dramatically named Soldier Hollow in Utah was a setting for a very competitive brace of races. A short track on day one followed by a full length XCO. The results made for interesting reading, with Canada's Magalie Rochette winning both in the women's elite category. It was only by very small margins on both races, but a dominance over short and long forms of racing will be enjoyed immensely. US racer Evelyn Dong and Argentina's Sofia Gomez Villafain were the other consistent finishers in both races. Dong with a second place and a fourth, and Villafain never off the podium, the second and third. Germany's Benjamin Sontag was the man who grabbed the win in a huge sprint finish in the men's short track race. He would not figure in the longer XCO, but second place Russell Finsterwald did bring home a fourth place in the longer form, so he takes most consistent rider over the two. He would not figure in the longer XCO, but second place Russell Finsterwald did bring home a fourth place in the longer form, so he takes most consistent rider over the two. In the XCO, we saw Nicola Rohrbach of Switzerland take the win and finish his American trip in style. He's enjoyed victories at Sea Otter in the short track and now this full distance race shows how well he's riding. Obviously, all these races are building form for the World Cup, so it'll be interesting to see how Rohrbach figures against his fellow Swiss racers in Alpstadt. There's certainly a lot of talent coming from that part of the world, but will his gamble of staying away in the States have paid off? You never know. The US's Keegan Swenson racing for Stan's pivot took second spot finishing 20 seconds behind Rohrbach and the same ahead of Ryan Standish who was the next best American. Thanks for watching this week, loads of racing to look forward to in the coming weeks so make sure you stay with us here on GMBN Race News. Also we have the Dirt Shed show covering all the news surrounding that racing too so join us on Friday for that one. To see a couple more videos whilst you're here click up there for Blake versus Ollie versus Sam Reynolds, good video and for a full roundup of Giants Pro Bikes, their factory racing team, click down there. Give us a thumbs up if you like mountain bike racing and don't forget to hit that subscribe button somewhere around here if you haven't done already.